How's it going everyone? This is Brian and welcome back to the Tech Stack Playbook, your guide to apps, software, and tech in a fun way, I promise. So this specific episode is the first of a series of videos that I'm calling Tech Stack in 10, and it's 10 minute or less videos to help you learn full stack development, serverless frameworks, and how to build apps. And this is going to be screen sharing, this is going to be super technical, this is going to be very visual, and I'm just so excited about it. And a lot of this inspiration started uh, when I started coaching around eight people to learn software engineering. And I started working uh, with these eight people about a couple weeks ago. And it's been such an exciting experience to see people really who maybe have never coded before, maybe people who have some coding experience but have never built apps, to see code be ed edited, deployed, really right from the browser, uh, just right before their eyes. And it's such an exciting experience to see someone go through that, to sort of pair program with someone and see them be like, oh wow, so so this is, this is software engineering, this is app development. So really I wanna take the learnings that I'm learning from this specific program that I launched, um, and also just my general learnings uh, in my, my day to day, just in like work to work. So this is where this specific episode is gonna kick this off. And I wanted to really dive into uh, specifically authentication uh, in AWS with Amplify and a React app. And something that I've been really diving into is how to authenticate certain types of data and how to work with data for specific types of users. And something that uh, I came across was seeing how basically data, depending on how you authenticate, can be accessible even outside of a login. So uh, something that I want to just, I'm going to actually jump to screen share and let's actually check that out and let's actually kind of dive into what I'm talking about. All right, so hopefully you can see my screen and what we are looking at right now is a to-do app and believe it or not, it lists our to-dos. So uh, basically what we are doing is using AWS AppSync to provision a graphical API for us. This is gonna let us send data to the cloud and also fetch that data back into our application. Additionally, we're storing our elements in DynamoDB, which is a very, very, very easy to use uh, database for, uh, and it looks actually just like this. So when we have items in a database like DynamoDB, each has a unique identification number and then we provision a certain type and we can add a number of different properties related to it. Um, also something that's really great is you can see the elements related to individual users. So we'll see that this is user one and we'll see that this is user two. So sort of it mixes in based upon what is entered in it. You have the create times and you're able to see all of the items and each item has an individual identification number. So what we're going to be looking at today is just some authentication practices that um, I've come across and wanted to walk through. And it comes up with Amplify Authenticator. So if you look at the documentation, you see that with Authenticator is a higher order component that wraps Amplify Authenticator. So I was actually thinking about sort of the code that we take for granted. So when we are working with an Amplify application, there's often this export default with Authenticator and then you call app. So basically you're gonna wrap your whole application into this with Authenticator module and it's gonna make you have to log in before you can access it. So obviously we are logged in, but let me just show you what that means. So when you're signed out, and let's refresh the page, we can't access anything in this app until we're logged in. So I'm gonna log in with our first account and we see that this is username and then we'll sign in. Great. So we're logged in and we're able to see all of the to-dos related to our application. Now let's sign out and log into our uh, account number two. So I'll do that right now. I'm going to sign in. And now do you see how there's only two to-dos as opposed to eight? So we are now in our specific account number two and the way that we provisioned our graphical API is for authentication. So only the users who created their own to-dos can see their own to-dos. So uh, if I create to-dos in my application, you wouldn't be able to see them. But if you created to-dos in your account, I wouldn't be able to see them in the application. So it's a really great way to use an API to provision access to resources and information that we stored uh, in DynamoDB. So again, this is the full table and we'll see 
username one with this unique item. But then for this one, username two. And it has to do, so it's the same table, it's the same information, but only I can see information if I'm logged into user one or user two, and vice versa. So something that I wanted to walk through that I found out, which was kind of interesting. So again, and I'm just gonna sign out really quickly again, just so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So we sign into user one, and we have these eight to-dos. I sign out, and we go into user two, sign in, and we only have two to-dos. This is great, okay, this is working. Now, what happens when we play around with this a little bit? So something that I was actually looking at was Amplify Authenticator just as this module, not with Authenticator, but just Amplify Authenticator. So what we're gonna do, just to show this as a demo, so I'm gonna comment that out and I'm gonna put just Export Default App. Now, I use uh, React Fragment because I like wrapping the functional component with multiple divs inside. This is just, a, I like it, it's just a really great way to have multiple divs. I, I Sometimes it can sort of get confusing with like, what's the overall div container. So React Fragment is just really great to be able to create like these subset sections and you're able to create divs, uh, I think more easily, just in terms of front end. So let's take this out for a second. And what I was experimenting with was taking out React Fragment and I originally thought that you could just wrap Amplify Authenticator. And you're giving me some issues. Let's find out how to comment you out. There we go. And comment you out. Okay, great. So I'm gonna save this. And what we're doing is basically just wrapping this app in Amplify Authenticator. So I thought that this would work seamlessly. So we were just logged into, and I'm actually going to give this a hard refresh just so that you can see what happens. So when we log in here, I'm going to do pass. So had a little bit of issues basically logging everything, but we were able to get it. So this is the to-dos of basically our account one. Now I'm gonna sign out and I'm gonna sign into username two and password number two. Now, do you see how this is now calling all of the to-dos of the previous account we were just logged in? So account number two only has two to-dos in this list, but our account number one has eight. So this is not great. So what actually will end up happening is if you refresh it, it'll now know that this is account number two. But something that was interesting was I thought wrapping an app in Amplify Authenticator would actually create uh, kind of a uh, another version of with Authenticator, but that's actually not the case. And this actually creates where, and a good example of this, I think is like uh, Google Drive or Gmail. So you could have multiple Google Drives logged in on different tabs and they won't interfere with each other. But I think with something like this, you have to really do like a hard refresh if you're on the same system. Now, I'm not sure if, if this is necessarily less secure if you have different devices. Obviously I'm on the same device, so I have the same, you know, like log in here and maybe the data is cached similarly like for a specific device, but differently across different devices. So that's something that I love to like dive more into, but this is just something that I noticed where if you switch between accounts while you are using just this as a wrapper, basically like there will be some data that's cached even if you sign out and sign back in. Now, let's uncomment out React Fragment. And I'm gonna try adding this again. And again, we still are keeping export default app, so I'm gonna sign out. I'm gonna try this again just from the top.
So it's still giving that issue. So I'm just gonna verify that again. So let's sign out one more time. And just so that we can see if this really is catching. So we're definitely signed into account number one. We have our eight to do's. I just signed out and I'm gonna put in the info of account number two. And it's still giving that same issue. So we're gonna definitely wanna make sure that we don't use this as a practice, but thanks to with Authenticator, we won't have to worry about that. So we'll comment this out. But, and we'll run this, and we'll just try this from the top one more time. Boom. All right. So this is a great practice for how to use with Authenticator and just make sure that you kind of follow similar practices like this to make sure that you keep your data uh, provisioned properly and accessible to the users that want it. So hope this was really helpful and looking forward to hearing what you think. All right, so I hope you got a lot of value out of this. Uh, I learned a lot from explaining this and talking through this with myself of um, just provisioning data and access to individual users. So uh, let me know in the comments uh, what you thought. Um, I'm also going to be blogging about this, so I'll include some notes and some sample copy of code there. And looking forward to seeing you on the next channel. All right, thanks everyone. I will catch you next time. Bye.